What is another genre somebody wants me to showcase? Any takers? Anyone Science have a genre fiction. they write? Science fiction. Science fiction. Okay, put the next one in the chat. So the other person had us things like put some genres in the chat and we'll get to them. Okay, so science fiction. What flavor of genre? You said a lot of like new technology. So is that near future science fiction? Yeah, sure. Okay. That works. I just recently learned about that term with uh, some <laughs> other people I was working with. Okay, so we're going to click on this generate a first draft option. This only appears at the moment if your document is completely blank. Okay, that's when you have your option to generate a first draft. Once you have words in here, you'll notice here, once I have words in here, I don't have generate a first draft option. And so we don't get lost on our little rabbit trail. We'll call this the Vatican thriller. That wasn't. We'll one, Elizabeth, one thing on the generate a first draft, what does it draw from for inspiration? It is the same AI. So it draws from whatever prompt you give it. So, but you have to, you just said if there are words, it will generate a draft. No, I'm sorry. If there are words, you can't find the button to generate a first draft. This only appears. So if you, if you press that, what's it relying on to generate? Oh, nothing. It's going to open up a prompt box for us to generate. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's okay. So this was part of like, a, it's so the user interface here is really trying to design to not allow you to click on buttons that it wouldn't make sense to use mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the wrong setting. So for example, this Vatican thriller, I'm already working on it. Because what, what you're going to find out is that first draft is going to just, it's going to be awesome. I promise that. But it, 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 it writes. It goes. Yeah. Um, we got a little bit in cards over here, 250 words. I have gotten as many as 2,200 words with first draft. Wow. First draft is the, if you prompt it correctly, you can get, you can get a good bit. Now, that 2,200 words I got were not fiction. I asked it to imagine 10 planets, and then I gave variables for the planets in terms of, like, tell me their gravity what local flora fauna they have, what the atmosphere is, how many moons it has. And each, each section should be a paragraph. So suddenly it, it imagined 10 planets for me. And then it had like three to four paragraphs of description for each planet. So mm -hmm. that's how it went crazy. Well, not crazy, but 2,200 words. Um, so it depends on your prompt. Okay, okay so I'm, I'm going to go back to the untitled. And I'm going to click generate a first draft. Now, the way I teach prompting is do uh -huh. what, how, and I'll put that in the chat for you guys. Do what, how. Okay. So what do I want it to do? I want it to write for me. We're going to do um, near future science fiction. So let's do some summaries. Write for me. So I've done the do. Now I have to do the what. What do I want it to write for me? Um, let's do five summaries. Actually, let's just do an opening scene. Write me an opening scene. So that's the what, and now I have to do the how. So uh, for um, a near future science fiction story about an inventor who is about to be murdered for his most recent invention. Now, the more details you give it here, it's not a game of how long can I make my prompt, but how specific can I give my instructions, okay? So I'm kind of tying in a little bit of this mystery too for you, Stephanie. We kind of went near science fiction mystery here. <laughs> um, about to be murdered for his most recent invention. Uh, give an example of Oh, I'm sorry, not give an example. The invention should be something that could be invented in the years of 2030 to 2045, okay? Mm -hmm. And write the scene with, uh, uh, write the scene these are optional things that I'm adding here. This is about being a prompt doctor. The more you do this, the more you practice, the better you get at talking to the computer. I happen to think like a robot, as I've been told for most of my life. It's finally come in handy um, in 2023. So write the scene uh, with an ominous tone, we'll tell it, right? Because it's about to be, he's about to be murdered. Okay. Now you could add information here about the setting. 
You could add information here about the inventor. I could say, you know, what, how old the inventor is. I'm leaving those things vague on purpose because I'm trying to give the AI a chance to be a junior partner here and give me some ideas. But if you know what you want, what should you do? Put it in the prompt. Yep. <laughs> don't don't leave the junior. I, I reinforce this because I promise you, as you work with pseudo right, you will get lost in mar how marvelous this thing is, and 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 you forget that it actually can't read your mind. It just feels that way sometimes. So I'm going to click go. And now we do have that little progress thing, the little purple. Now this one does run sometimes a little bit longer, and now it's going. It really likes to talk about the sun. I'm going to be honest with you. It likes to start scenes off about whatever's going on in the sky with the sun. All right. That's impressive. Yeah, it's just going. Now, if for some reason this was not what I wanted, I could press the escape key and that would make it stop immediately. Yeah, but we are at 443 words, yes? Quick question, how many words can you put in the prompt just now for the, uh, at the top there? You can type the as many as you want. Okay. Yeah, um, it gives kind of an error that it might not be able to process all of that and it can't, it, sometimes it can't. So the current AI models right now can handle about 2,700 words of prompting, but that usually includes the response as well. So I wouldn't make your prompt in the first draft box more than about 1,000 to 1,500 words. It can't be a guarantee that it's going to read all of those or use those all in the right weighting that they are. Um, and that has to do with more about how the AI is prompted. So pseudo writes fantastic because for those of us who write, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of prompting. If you were to try to work with the AI in some like raw environment, you have to prompt it and all this other stuff. It's, it's really kind of tedious. But pseudo write makes everything kind of like with a drop of a button. So while you prompt it, um, they have actually created parameters and frameworks in the back end and stuff like that to kind of make sure that you're getting fiction. Because if you just work with AI in the raw or something, you might put something in there and you get a letter or you get a nonfiction piece or, or you get told by the AI that you really shouldn't be writing a book about murder because murder is wrong. <laughs> All right, Missy, you have a question. I do. Um, I'm embarrassed that I have this question. No, so please don't. if which is the place I want to start? This window is first draft. The other, I don't, the right where we were putting a bunch of stuff in. I'm sorry, I don't remember what to call that. Yeah, no, if right. I sort of know, like I'm in writing a first draft of my second novel mm -hmm. and I know a lot, but it's in clouds of, so I would like to start using this to help me write faster and get it on paper faster instead of doing this thing that my brain does right, right now. So should I start? Do you think with this first draft and just give really specific prompts and go like chapter by chapter or paragraph? I mean, start at the beginning and see what we come up with. Yeah, so I kind of know what happened, so I know yeah. enough. I think mm -hmm. to tell it. Um, you'll notice that I just did that one little prompt and I got six hundred and fifty-five words. Which yeah, amazing. I don't know about you, but I'm happy about that, and it's not all bad. I mean, this is the junior writing partner and we'll go over. So I would use first draft. Once you have some scenes, if, if you're somebody who, who writes a vomit draft, you're probably going to want to write, use the right feature and guided and, and the, the other features I'm going to show you um, tonight. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right. Let's see how the junior partner did, right? I'm not going to read the first paragraph because it's just about the sun. <laughs> Let's get that first line. Because I, I want to show you guys how I would use it. I would edit that first line. How many of you who are writers, professional writers, would edit that first line? The sun had just begun to set bathing the sky in a soft pink hue. Yeah, we all are like, no, that's not that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of show you some other features that we can use right away. And we're going to kind of mix because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, so if I don't like this about the night and everything like that, we have a cool feature called rewrite. So I just highlight what I want to work with. Mm -hmm. And I call this, like, I feel like a surgeon, like with my scalpel tool that I can play with this. Um, I can just click rewrite. Now rewrite has some really great uh, presets. So I'm gonna do the drop down on this right-hand side. I can rephrase it. I can make it shorter. I can make it more descriptive. I can show not tell. I can have more inner conflict, more intense. Um, I am going to customize rewrite to, 
<sighs> okay, mm. truthfully, I would just cut it. I mean, we're not going to talk about the sky, but we'll 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 go ahead and give it rewrite to be um, rewrite to be a time setting of night and not sound cliche. Okay, sound good? We're going to mm -hmm. make it to evening. I don't know why we've got orange and blue and pink and purple and blue. Like, no, it is going to not sound cliche. And I'm going to click go. Now, rewrite can only rewrite at the moment about 200, up to 250 words. So when you are working with rewrite, you want to make sure you work with a section that gives the rewrite room to breathe. So if you use the preset show, don't tell, and you highlight 250 words, have you given the robot room to really add anything? No. So you only want to do like show, don't tell with maybe about 100 to 150 words so it could, it has room to expand. Okay. Wouldn't, uh, question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So just like that, you know, you said the setting of night, right? Now, now you just rewrote this bit. Now, will it remember that you've set this to night? Like with chat GPT, right? It remembers your previous conversations as you go through. And so will this remember that, yes, you've set the time for night. And so I don't remember what the rest of the prompt was there. But kind of, there... and it depends. It depends okay. on what I'm using next. So what it'll do, certain features of pseudo write read up. And all this, I do detail that in your workbook. So the right, mm -hmm. anything under on this left-hand side, anything here, auto guided and tone shift, those three features there will read up a thousand words on what you're writing with. If you work with anything else, it does not read up. It only reads what you highlight and takes that into consideration. So on this side, so anything under this is a thousand words up and anything that is not that, it's only what you highlight. Those are the two, two differentials. Um, so I have here, the sun had completely disappeared surrounding the twilight sky. I don't like that one. A sea of stars, nope. Let's just use this last line. The moon shone bright in the sky, casting its eerie glow on the horizon. It's not perfect but it's not pink and purple. <laughs> so I'm just copying it and I put it, I put it in there. In the laboratory, a lone figure worked on a mysterious new invention, its shimmering metallic surfaces reflecting the dying light. The figure was small and slight with long curly hair that cascaded down their back. The figure's eyes were bright and full of life, but there was a hint of something else in them as well, something darker, more mysterious. Um, the figure finished their work and stepped back. So one problem about my prompt is I didn't tell the gender of who my inventor is, correct? And you mm -hmm. see that the pseudo that pseudo right didn't assume it just made it um, non-binary. So, um, and uh, as they reached for the handle, they heard a voice from the other side. You have something special in there, don't you? Something that could have a great impact on the world. The figure waited, unsure of how to answer. After a few moments, the voice spoke again. The voice spoke again. Open the door and let's talk. I think it's time we discussed your invention. The figure hesitated, but eventually opened the door. So I would say one problem with this is that my prompt was a little too vague. Would you guys agree? Like, it's not bad writing, but I gave my junior partner kind of a, a bad prompt there because I didn't give them specifics. I didn't name who my inventor is. I didn't do any of that. Mm -hmm. So if I did change that in my first draft, here's one, one downside of bad prompting. If I go change my prompt, I'm not gonna get these words again. I'm going to get different words. So if you want to change your prompt and you know that you might wanna use pieces of something that you already generated, don't delete this, start a new document, okay? And I'll just show you how to do that. So um, the way to do that, because I, I want the first draft, I'm just gonna select something else and then come back to this. And now I have this draft card right here. See this draft card? So the way to make that draft card appear is you go out of the document and you come back in and the draft card will be right there on the right hand side. And this does keep your history of everything that you've prompted the AI to do in this document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that and highlight this and I want to grab my prompt again. So I have the same prompt that I'm working with. I just, I just expanded the draft button. So draft tells me that that was the first draft and then I saw the prompt. And then I'm going to go bad first draft um, science fiction. And I'm gonna go to a new one. And we'll put that draft, in, that will put that prompt in there. So let's be more specific. We wanna make it a female inventor. We had the long curly hair. Sure, okay, I'm just gonna put details in there. A female inventor who's about to be murdered for, oh, 
her most recent invention affecting um i don't know i'm trying to think um how long it takes for vegetables to decompose <laughs> <laughs> There we go. So I can take out the invention because I, I now declared what the invention is. We're going to write the scene with a campy, humorous tone. The killer is a chiropractor who is really tired of his asparagus and avocados spoiling at inconvenient times. There we go. This is why Elizabeth does not write science fiction or mystery. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to click go. And it's going. I don't know. Anyone else you put vegetables in the crisper and you forget about them? Ooh, he would murder her. With a deep breath, Dr. Wally Nicholson made the final turn down the street leading to the quiet suburban home of his most famous patient, Dr. Mary Lancaster. He'd been waiting for the perfect opportunity to carry out his sinister plan. And tonight seemed like it was as good a time as any. <laughs> See how different it is as soon as it has some details, though. The Crazy. junior partner is like doing much better. So, okay. So sorry, question. Yeah. <laughs> so how did it choose? Because as I'm reading this real quickly, it yeah. chose him as the point of view, as the main character in a way, not her, even though you started off describing her. It was the choice that it made. If we generated okay. that exact same prompt again, and we will, because it might not do that. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at that. But you could so, say that she's the I main could. character, right? Yeah, let's do that. We'll or should it be from her point, point of view? Absolutely. Yeah. So the way I get my draft card over here is I have to go out of it, come back into it, and then it'll appear. And, and that's just to signal like it's done. And that gave us 600 words. So I'm gonna highlight this and we're gonna go add new. And this was supposed to be the beginner intro class, but I kind of, I couldn't help myself. We're doing some advanced features here. Um, so I'm going to put it at the end, write the scene in the inventors point of view. Okay, yeah, Stephanie, yes, you have a question. So say you uh, um, you were writing and you put uh, like a, a cat or, or, or a pet in it, would it write it from the, the pet's point of view too? Absolutely. You can even say rewrite this passage to be from the perspective of cat. Hold on a second, we will do that. So let me click go. By the way, I'm loving that you guys are like, okay, now I know what to, like, now I know how to work with this thing. Let me throw, let's throw all the spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> this is my favorite <laughs> thing to do in pseudo write. So now it is a first person point of view. So now you notice it is from the inventor's point of view. <laughs> My asparagus and avocados are going bad on me all the time now. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> People are really upset about avocados and things. I want to see it from the avocados point of view. <laughs> I know, from the avocados point of view. <laughs> you just. Okay, so this is from the parent point of view of the inventor, but I want this from the point of view of her cat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, these first two paragraphs, because remember when we rewrite, we want to give it room and that's 132 words. So rewrite is only going to read these words. It's not going to read anything further down. Um, I'm going to read it what it is, the original, just so that we can see the difference. I stared at the contents of my laboratory, the rows of esoteric gadgets and marveled at the wonders of science. I had invented a way to keep fruits and vegetables fresh longer, a revolutionary breakthrough that would revolutionize grocery shopping. <laughs> it was my greatest achievement yet, and I could feel a swell of pride in my chest each time I glanced at the devices in my laboratory. But now something was wrong. I just noticed a weird note on my chair, one that I hadn't been inspecting. It read, I can't take this anymore. Meet me at the park for one last goodbye. My heart raced as I read the words, trying to figure out what it meant. Was this from my chiropractor? Why did he want me to meet him? <laughs> okay, so we have some action beats here. So I'm going to say customize, rewrite, to be from the point of view of the inventor's cat. Go. 
nobody have a drink because you'll spit it out. <laughs> My owner was in his usual spot in the laboratory, a proud smirk on his face as he admired. Now, this is because I said a female in the key details, but remember, rewrite only reads what I have here. Okay. So it decided the inventor was a he. But if I had put in the point of view, the inventor is a woman or the inventor's name, it would have mm. picked it um, I could smell the excitement and accomplishment coming off of him in waves. All seemed right in the world until he noticed something unusual. He snatched up a piece of paper off his chair and read it, his eyes widening with surprise. His emotions shifted, first confusion, then dread. He quickly stuffed the note into his pocket. I watched as he started pacing, his brow furrowed with worry and uncertainty. But I knew where he was going, to meet the one he loves for one last goodbye. Sentient cat. Hmm. But, yes. <laughs> If you write mysteries, if you write rom-com, if you write whatever, you can you can definitely play with this and, and have some fun with it. Okay, so <clears throat> some other features that I wanna talk about. I know it's 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna try to do these real fast and then I'll make sure that there is some still time for questions and all of that. Um, let's say I want to do some description. So I'm actually not gonna take the cat's point of view right now because here's what I want to do. I am going to highlight this. I had invented a way to keep fruits and vegetables fresh longer, a revolutionary breakthrough that would revolutionize grocery shopping. And I'm going to show you the last big feature that I think is really important, which is describe here. And if you do a drop down, you have sight, smell, taste, sound, touch, and metaphor. Mm -hmm. You can slide these off and on. So if you um, are conserving words or anything like that, or maybe you just don't need a metaphor, um, you can undo it. I personally, I I use the biggest plan anyway, so I like to have all of the things there. So I can click describe. And it's a little gonna, it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle for the junior writing partner because I didn't specifically say it was an invention. I just said it was a thing. So it's going to really kind of be as creative as it can be here. The fruits and vegetables were preserved in a gas that held the life, but not the spoiling. They were not frozen nor cooked, but preserved in a state of suspended animation. That's really good, junior writer and partner. Hmm. Like, I wasn't able to think of a way to save these fruits and vegetables longer, were you? I mean, those of you who write science fiction, I'm sure you were, but. Um, so this is, it's going to do sight. So everything in here is going to be about sight for, for that. Smell, the air was fresh, too fresh. It was a crispness that could only come from the absence of life of rot of decay. Now that's a really cool detail if I'm describing some fruits and vegetables and suspended, suspended animation. Taste. My teeth sunk into the apple, my tongue rolled over it, and I felt a hole form in my consciousness. Oh dear. Some would call it a flaw, but really it's a gift. <laughs> okay. So apparently this invention has side effects, but it should come with a warning. Be tripping. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The sound, the plastic of the containers and the hiss of the gas gave off a distinct high pitched sound that like the hiss of carbonated soda. Touch. The preserved fruits and vegetables were firm and hard to the touch. The, smooth, the skin was not leathery and wrinkled, but smooth and impeccable. Um, talked about glass cubes. Now, metaphor. Metaphor, you can get some really good stuff. He had been the man holding the electric socket the night Thomas Edison brought electricity to the world. And he had been the man holding the electronic keypad the night Alexander Graham Bell said, Watson, come here, I need you. Yeah, this is just a metaphor. A wash of pride would swell in his chest with each passage of a patronizing neighbor, each subtle flex of power making him feel like the sun, a prickly sphere of ultraviolet light reserved for the celestial. Okay. And this one says he had invented a way to keep fruits and vegetables fresh longer, a revolutionary break. Inside his guts were heavy bags of chemicals, <laughs> slick bullets of iron, wads of meat, and above all, a string wielding flesh. Oh my goodness. Sometimes you can find some good nuggets in the metaphorical stuff. Um, I will say that I find the metaphorical stuff sometimes really helps my writing to push it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Just reading that prompt would make me immediately think that somewhere in the story, I want to talk about what the invention does to people. So maybe the inventor does get murdered. The person, the chiropractor starts to try to get rich and then he's ultimately sued because he, he inadvertently poisoned people because the fruit can't actually be eaten or something like that. And which he would have known if he hadn't killed the inventor that it wasn't quite finished yet. So that's where for me personally, I riff back and forth with the robot. Any questions about describe? No. Okay. All right. Um, the last one that I want to show for tonight is called guided write. So just to recap, we've gone over write. 
which you can use if you put some words in here and you can tell it to go. If you need to give it more information, you can use key details to put those informa that information in right here under your right settings. Um, I'm gonna bump the creativ creativity up a little bit. Oh, let's take out the key details because it still thinks I'm writing a thriller. That's why it's so <laughs> ominous, even though I told it to be funny. There's a mistake. Um, Cause I told it to be funny and hilarious and it still kind of got kind of ominous. I was kind of impressed by that but it was because it was trying to still write a thriller and still listen to the prompt. Okay, um, so we went over write, we went over first draft, we went over visualize, um, we went over describe and we went over rewrite. So the next one I'm gonna show you is one of the write functions and remember write functions read up a thousand words and we're gonna talk about this guided right here. So we've gotten to the point that the inventor has read the note from the chiropractor, right? And we're gonna pretend that everything else below isn't there. We're going to pretend we don't know what happens next or we want something to happen next. So we're going to do this in two different ways. I put my cursor where I want it to go. I come down here, I select guided, and then I put my cursor where I want it to go, and I'm going to click guided again. Now, pseudo write, the junior writing partner, can suggest plot points of what could come next based on reading up up to 1,000 words. So I'm going to turn on suggestions. When you turn on suggestions, you are charged for these words. See how it was like populating those words? If it's populating, it is gonna charge those words against your word count. Okay, when I arrived, I saw that my chiropractor had invented a new technology to write on my own. In an effort to show their appreciation for my invention, a group of investors approached me and offered to invest in the technology, or after much deliberation, I accepted the offer and started a new business venture with the investors. I could choose those, but what I usually often do is I write my own. And if you want to see examples, you can, but I'm going to put that. So we had the, uh, the point of view of the cat, right? Who wants the cat to do something in the story? Oh, me. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. What should the cat do? What do we want the cat to do? Fake like he's a chiropractor and start taking his business. The cat's going to fake being a chiropractor? I, 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 I'm tired. I don't know. I don't okay. Know. Okay. That, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe he grows asparagus. Forget that. Yep. Maybe he yeah, grows the asparagus. Cat, the cat jumps up on the work table and steals the asparagus. How about that? That's better. Yeah, and steals the asparagus. Some of us work as a committee. <laughs> no, I, I was going to say, you have like 20 books. I have like one. <laughs> no, I, honestly, Missy, I had nothing until you said something. My brain breaks <laughs> and then yeah. somebody will say something and I can collaborate. This is why uh, I'm indeed. Robot. Yeah. No, that was great. You were like, no, the cat, chiropractor, got it, the vegetables. <laughs> it very good. Okay. Oh, the inventor moves to chase the cat and has an immediate back spasm. Oh my gosh, of course. <laughs> That's why she sees the chiropractor. <laughs> All right, we're gonna click go. Now, guided write can do as much as your prompt, but it is about uh, 250 words, whatever you've selected in your cards on the left hand side there. It'll be about that. So, um, so I can highlight this and it won't show me the words up here in the cards, but um, I just use a plugin. So I have word counter plus and the plugin will tell me that that's 181 words. So it's not quite 250 words, but it, it gets into the ballpark as much as it can. Suddenly I heard the sound of something crashing from the work table. I looked up and saw my precious invention, a stack of asparagus rolling across the floor. To my surprise, there was a small cat perched atop the table looking at me with its big yellow eyes. It had obviously been attracted to the smell of my invention and wanted to sample it for itself. I shouted in surprise and ran towards the table to shoo away the cat, but my back spasmed in response to my sudden movement. I stumbled backwards with a groan of pain while simultaneously reaching out to grab hold of something that would keep me upright. Unfortunately, it just happened to be the cat's tail. <laughs> The creature yelled in protest oh. before jumping off the table and running out of sight. I sighed and grabbed onto one of my work tables for support as I watched my asparagus roll away across the floor. What an incredible mess this was. My greatest achievement had been nearly ruined by a small cat that just wanted a snack. <laughs> really? For this one, um, this one, so the second card decided it was her cat. So this is where you get some options where the junior writing partner was trying to figure it out. So um, the cat had made its escape. And again, I would just click insert and now it's in there and it's purple. And once again, we have like 700 words to play with and edit and start working with. So um, 
there are many more features of PseudoWrite. They are all listed in the back of your workbook. A couple just to show you the brainstorm. This is great. If I wanted to brainstorm characters, I could say, give me a list of invention names that keep vegetables fresh longer. Uh, the context, I'm going to say it's a science fiction uh, comedy mystery because we want funny ones. And you can give it examples, but I don't have any examples. So we're gonna take those out and we're just gonna click start. Um, Robo Fresher, the BB Pack, Cryo, Cryo Freezer, Cool Ray Refrigerator. I'm gonna keep that one, I like that one. If I don't like something, like if I don't like the Robo Refresher, a robotic arm that keeps vegetables constantly misted with a preservative spray. I mean, it's close, but not quite. Ooh, Veggie Vault Preservation Pods. That's a winner right there. And I'm gonna click just a few more. And the reason I'm clicking a few more, I don't actually like those ones, but I'm just keeping them. I can click save and exit. And when I do so, brainstorm keeps all of my brainstorms handy dandy in the document I was working in. That is a lifesaver for me all the time because I lose my sticky notes of what I was brainstorming. So that feature is right there for you. Um, there's a couple of other features that uh, I wanted. Oh, we have some messages here. First draft does not incorporate the key details. First draft only incorporates what you have there, as far as I know. So it got kind of ominous when I was trying to do um, the rewrites and everything, or when I was, actually, I guess not. Maybe it does look at the key details. I don't know, it didn't, it didn't seem to like write the Vatican, but it definitely was kind of like ominous in tone and things like that. So that's an interesting question, Austin. I'll ask, I will get that back. First draft, but I think the key details only works with the, re with the right functions. Um, one other thing that you can use if you're trying to get more words, if you wanted more information about this part here, you can highlight it. And we've already done rewrite, we've already done describe, and we've already done visualize. And the last one to get more words is expand. Expand only reads what you highlight, and it literally just expands it. It just adds more detail into there. Hmm. So you see how it took that one paragraph, which was 65 words, and it turned that into, well, a lot. Wow. <laughs> they may not all be good, but that was 311 words that it turned it into. So what it did is it actually kept, mm -hmm. it continued the story though. It continued with, I grabbed my coat and headed for the park when I arrived. So it, it kept writing more about what would continue on there for meeting the chiropractor. Okay, nope, there are no key details in first draft. I, I got a message from, um, the people who code this. I don't code, I can't code. I can only write books. <laughs> That's what I can do. So no key details in the first draft function. The workbook has different examples, but it does have information in there. And then at the back of the workbook there, it has like a brief description of each tool. Um, some other places that you can find information and documentation. Definitely on that gear, that gear one, it says join our community. I am in that Slack every single day. And if I'm not in there, other people who are just as hip and smart as like with pseudo right who have been using it as long as I have or even the people who have built this wonderful machine they're in there too and they will answer your questions we have a bunch of different threads so whatever you're trying to work on someone will will graciously help you yeah, um, been, the, uh, I appreciate that I've been I've been uh, lurking about for the last couple of days and appreciate all the uh, give and take yeah um, it's mostly authors in there, some nonfiction, some educators. It's a really great group. Mm -hmm. um, the question mark right here. If you click the question mark, this is where you can join our Slack. You can read a guide that um, I will click on. And the guide has lots of information for different functions that you wanna work on. Even some that I wasn't able to show tonight like characters and twists, some of these are newer. Um, and I just wanna be able to get you guys enough information tonight that you could just get going with PseudoWrite. And you just find that right here on that little help file, the little help question. You can also vote on features, suggest a features or report a bug or email or chat. So that's what that's right there. 